Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. There's three manuals to the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 58. Please turn to it. Page number 58 and today is our lesson number 5. Today we'll deal with the notion of multiplying and dividing fractions. Let's take a look at it. The very first problem that they give you here on page number 58, example 2.8. It simply says, simplify the expression. And the expression is 2 and 5 8 times 3 and 1 7. And of course, we know, we talked about it before, I don't remember which day it was, perhaps it was day number 1. I believe it was day number 1. The very first thing that we talked about was uh, the fact uh, why this one is called an expression. Why is this, why is this an expression? A lot of the times I hear people referring to this thing as an equation. It is an expression as opposed to an equation because equation as we know already is so called because an equation contains an equal sign this thing has no equal sign in it this is not called an equation it is called an expression and our job is to multiply these two quantities shall we? well the thing to do here first is to express this thing in decimal or rather not decimal but rather into fraction this is a mixed fraction express this as an improper fraction express this as an improper fraction here once we have a fraction here and a fraction here then we can simply multiply the top and multiply the bottom and we are done. Let's work on this one first. 2 and 5 8 is same as 2 plus 5 8. Nothing earth shattering there. Nothing earth shattering at all. How can we write 2 so that it has a denominator of 8? 2 can be written as 16 over 8. There you go. 16 over 8 is 2. So we have 2 and 5 8. Now since they have the same denominator, we all we have to do is simply add up 16 and 5. 16 plus 5 is 21 I believe. Yep, 21 over 8. Which is exactly what we are told to do in the school. We are told to multiply 8 times 2 is 16 plus 16 plus 5 is 21. 21 over 8. That part is done. Let's move on to this part now. That says 3 and 1 7. Again, it's just simply going to be 3 times 7 which is 21 plus 1 is 22. Another way to look at it is it is 3 plus a 1 7 and 3 can be expressed as 21 over 7 plus a 7. Now we have the same denominator so we get 21 plus 1 which is 22. 22 over 7. So that's it we are done. We have this part, we have this part, all we have to do is multiply them. Let's do them here. Let's do them right here. So 2 and 5 8 we found out is 21 over 8 times 3 and 1 7 we just found out is 22 over 7 this does not look right did I make a mistake 22 over 7 ok 22 over 7 there you go now on the top we have 21 over 21 times 22 on the bottom we have 8 times 7 before you waste your time multiplying 21 by 22 ask yourself if there is anything that you can reduce the answer is yes answer is almost always in 99% of the cases is yes nobody is going to expect you to multiply the 21 times 22 in the exam as you can see this is 21 which is divisible by 7 this is 7 let's multiply top and bottom by 7 if you multiply, uh, rather if you divide top and bottom by 7 this 7 is going to drop out and 21 is going to become 3 Similarly, I see an even number here, I see an even number there. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 8 divided by 2 is going to give us 4, and 22 is going to become 11. That's it, now we are done. So we end up with 3 times 11, which is 33, over 4. We're not quite out of the woods, I believe, is the expression, I'm not sure. We're not quite done yet. 33 over 4. I know, it's, I know the expression, I just don't know whether it's singular or plural. Out of the wood or out of the woods. I think out of the wood. Wood is the forest. I believe. If 
you haven't quite figured it out yet, English is not my first language. 33 divided by 4 can be written as 32 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And 32 over 4 is simply 8. So we end up with 8 and a quarter. That's our final answer. 8 and a quarter. That was the first example that they give you there in the book, which they solve, solve uh, for us uh, themselves. Let's do the next one. Next one is also solved. I need the room, obviously. The next one says, number 2, to a rather 2.9. Oh, 2.9 is a tricky one. What is the quotient of 3, three quarter divided by 7? What is the quotient of 3 quarter divided by 7? It is just a matter of understanding the language. What the hell does it mean? What is the quotient of 3 quarter divided by 7? That's what we're going to talk about right now for the next few minutes. Let's keep this question in abeyance. Okay? Let's keep this question in abeyance. Again, it does not hurt to get a better score in the English portion and not just to get a better score in the exam but in life in general it does not hurt to improve one's vocabulary and if you recall or perhaps you will not recall if you have not watched any of my vocabulary videos we did learn the word abeyance way back on day number nine just type in vocab just type in vocabulary, type, just type in Kashwani, my name, uh, and then vocabulary, day 9. And in that video, we learned the word abeyance. Let's carry on then. Let's talk about what quotient actually means. Here, let's take a look at this example. 7 divided by 3. Let's divide 7 by 3, okay? 7 divided by 3 is going to go 2 times, that's 6, and that's the 1. This part is quite straightforward, as everybody knows that this is the remainder. This part is not something that uh, gives anybody a uh, problem. Quotient is just a fancy way of saying the number that we get as a result of division. The number that we're getting as a result of division here is 2. This is called quotient. 3 is called the number that we're dividing by we are dividing by 3. 3 is called divisor. And finally, number that is being divided, here 7 is the number that is being divided, and that's called dividend. Make sure you get take good notes and know this terminology so that you, so that you don't have to pause in the middle of the exam to think about them. It's a waste of time. It also makes you nervous. Last thing you want to, last thing that you want to have is more anxiety during the exam. Do you understand? So now that we understand all of this part, let me write all of this down if you like. What is the dividend? Dividend. Dividend is the number being divided. In our case, 7. Divisor is the number is the number we are dividing by. Another way to remember, actually I need the room, I need to raise this, well perhaps I shouldn't raise it. Uh, another way to remember the divisor is that, okay, listen carefully, another way to remember the divisor is that divisor is a very fancy way of saying, very fancy way of saying,
factor. If someone asks you what are the divisors of 12, will you be able to enumerate divisors of 12 in a matter of seconds? Let's find out, shall we? Divisors of 12, which is a very fancy way of saying, very bloody annoying way of saying, what are the factors of 12? Well, that's quite straightforward. Let's do it here. Or perhaps we'll look into it here. All the numbers that 12 can be divided evenly into. And we're looking for, whenever you're looking for factors of any numbers, it's always a good idea not to forget the 1, because any number can be divided by 1. 1 is a factor of every number. So the first one is 1. Then we can divide 12 evenly by 2. We can divide 12 evenly into 3. 12 can be divided evenly by 4. 12 will also go evenly into 6. And finally, you mustn't forget the number itself. Any number is a factor of itself, because of course any number will be divisible evenly by itself. We're going to get 1. 87 divided by 87 is 1. 87 is a factor of 87. 1 is a factor of 87. So mustn't forget the 1, and mustn't forget the number itself. These, these are, these are divisors, or if you like, factors of 12. Factors of 12. Enough of the talk. What is the quotient? Quotient is the result that we get, the number that we get, when one number is divided by the other. That's what they're looking for here. Let's do the problem now. Let's do the problem now. I need to raise a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll get out of your way for a second in case you want to pause it or write something down. Whenever I tell you, whenever I tell you that I'm going to get out of your way for a few seconds so that you can write everything down and pause this thing, that's just my euphemistic way of saying, I need a break for a few seconds. That's all so that I can sit my tea. You need to raise this thing. I need the room, obviously. So what is this thing asking? What is this thing asking? What's the quotient of 3 quarter divided by 7? Here's the translation in plain English language. Translation of this thing in plain English language is, what is the final result, the final result is what we call quotient, what is the final result when 3 quarter is divided by 7, that's what they're asking here, what is the final result when 3 quarter is divided by 7? That's all we have to do here. We just have to divide 3 quarter by 7. Let's do it here, shall we? We know that 3 quarter is just 3 quarter. We know 7 can be written as 7 over 1. And what do you do when you have one fraction being divided by another fraction? For example, for example, I need the room, so really we have to raise it, I have to... Let's digress here for a second, shall we? For example, how much is 81 divided by 9? Well, 81 divided by 9 is 9, we know that. 9 divided by 6 over 2, well this part, this part is 9 divided by 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. We already know the answer is 3. We already know that 81 divided by 9 is 9, and therefore, 9 divided by 6 over 2, which is 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Let's, let's now look at the actual procedure that you will have to show in the exam. Well, actually, you don't have to show the procedure in the exam, but the procedure that you will have to go through in order to figure out the final answer, because, of course, in the exam, you're not going to encounter something as simple as that. You're going to have something like this. So what we do is we take 81 divided by 9, and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the other fraction. So 6 over 2 becomes... 2 over 6. Now if you find anything common between top and bottom, you start our process. First of all, 81 can be divided by 9, we get 9 on the top, then we have a 9 here, we have a 6 there, let's divide top and bottom by 3. 
If you divide top and bottom by 3, 9 becomes 3 and 6 becomes 2. Now let's divide top and bottom by 2. When you divide top and bottom by 2, 2 cancels out and we are left with only the 3. Which of course we knew the answer. But that's the process. That's what you have to do here. 3 quarter times 7 over 1 will become 1 over 7. That's it, we are done. So 3 times 1 is 3. And then here we have 4 times 7, which is 28. And that's our final answer. That's our final answer. I'm going to stop right here. I was about to do the exercises also, but I'm going to stop right here, but otherwise it will become a very long video. Just give me one second, I'm making up my mind here as I speak. Yes, I'm going to stop right here. Tomorrow we'll do the four problems that you see at the bottom of the page, the practice problems. Alright, bye now.